Welcome to Getting Started with Pieces Desktop App, an AI productivity tool for developers that revamps your entire development workflow, making your coding journey smoother and more efficient. Pieces isn't just another tool. It's an AI-powered assistant that integrates seamlessly into your development environment. It helps store and resurface valuable code snippets, solve complex coding problems, and even generate code tailored to your unique needs. And all of this can be done completely on device, ensuring maximum security for your data. While Pieces offers a wide range of integrations with browsers, IDEs, and other productivity tools, today we're focusing on our flagship desktop application. In this video, we'll cover the installation and onboarding process, but be sure to check out part two of this series, as well as more in-depth tutorials and guides on our YouTube channel to learn more. To start things off, let's begin with the installation. Head over to our homepage at pieces.app, navigate to the top bar, and click the Install Now button. This will take you to our documentation page to download for macOS, but don't worry, we have both Windows and Linux available as well, and the process is almost identical. So since I have a silicon chip, I'm going to download the Apple silicon package. Now that that's downloaded, we've opened up the installer and it's a simple standard install. We're just gonna follow these steps into our password. It'll install it. Shouldn't take very long at all. And just like that, we are up and running in Pieces desktop app. And you'll notice that it actually opens up a quick browser page to thank you for our downloads and even tell you about some of our other integrations that we have. For now, we're going to minimize that and focus on the onboarding experience. This is a brand new onboarding experience that we're bringing you. And I'll start with the very basics. We have a light and dark theme, of course, for this. We'll stay with dark and I'm going to share my crash data, but obviously this is completely optional. And before we get started, Filling out this accurately really does enhance your overall experience with pieces, so I highly recommend that you watch through this entire video and follow along. To get started, we'll click this Personalization Preferences. This will take us to the next page, and you'll see the very top, we're actually given a list of developer personas as well as languages to kick off our onboarding experience. For myself, I'm gonna click some full stack. I also do some gaming on the side as well as UI UX development. And it will dynamically adjust this list of languages based on our personas selected. So I'm gonna select, I do a little Dart, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Python, Lua every once in a while, and definitely TypeScript. So that'll be fine for our personas and languages for now. You can even add other tools in your tool chain. So I use VS Code, Google Chrome is definitely one, JetBrains, do not use Edge or Slack, but definitely Obsidian, and I'll select others because there's a few other integrations that I use as well. As far as experience level goes, I'll give myself intermediate. In project types, I actually work on both, so we'll select the both option. Now let's head over to the search, reference, and reuse page. The first thing that you'll notice here is that we're going to define our default view. So for those that are constantly in the copilot asking questions every time they open up pieces, you may want to select Copilot Chats as your default view. But others that like to reference snippets that they've used before, we also have the list view and gallery view. And of course, you can click the preview to get a quick look of what this may look like before you select it. Me personally, I like the list view, so we'll go with that for now. For our default search engine, we have four options. The first one being Neural Code Search, which is my personal favorite. It essentially allows you to search what you're looking for rather than, you know, exactly matching the text that's in the code snippet. You can search with code. Maybe you have a snippet that's somewhat similar to what you're looking for. You can paste that in the search bar. Or you can do a full text search, which is exact matches of entire snippets or substrings of those snippets. And then lastly, it's a blended search. It's a great blend of all the three that we've gone over. For now, I'm going to go with our neural code search. And for our default sort mode, this is how our snippets will be automatically sorted for us whenever we enter pieces. So we have recent, which is chronologically suggested, which uses an internal algorithm, um, which will sort by the most relevant snippet. 
alphabetically, A to Z, and then of course by language, which is really nice if you uh, utilize many different languages. My personal favorite is recent, so we'll stick with that. Next, we're gonna go to the auto enrichment and copilot page. So the first option that we have is to specify our preferred AI and ML enrichment mode. So we have blended, which uses both on-device and cloud machine learning models. But we also have air gapped, which is great if you wanna keep all of your data processing on-device. This is especially useful if you have sensitive data that you don't want getting in the cloud. For now, we're gonna select blended as this is the recommended option. Now comes the fun part. We get to select our default large language model runtime. So here we'll actually give you a recommended on-device model based on your system specs. For my computer, they recommend a Mistral 7 billion GPU model, which is great. We can also, of course, select our cloud models. But for this example, I'm going to give the recommended model a go and let this download, which should only take one or two minutes while we go over the other settings. So you'll see in the top right, we can actually specify to the level of enrichment that we want for every single snippet that we save. For example, we have tabs. So we can go from all the way to zero, which is none, low, medium, all the way up to high. I think high is fine. Um, for websites, I like a good amount of websites. Um, but for people, maybe I want those people to be a little bit more refined. So we'll keep those as low. And then suggested searches, maybe not as much as you know seven or nine. Let's do three or five for that one. And now one of the newest features that we have is the ability to pre-index local projects that you're working on to use later in Copilot conversations. So we're actually going to add one that I've been working on recently, which is actually our Copilot vanilla TypeScript example. And I'll add the source folder here, which has a few files in it. And now all of that code has been indexed on device using machine learning. And just in time, the local model just finished downloading and we're gonna click the activate button. But don't worry, you don't have to wait on this. It'll download in the background and you can activate it later. So now we're gonna to go to the last page of our onboarding and this is where we actually are able to sign in to our cloud and unlock those sharing capabilities. It's great to note that this page is completely optional and so if you don't wanna log in at all, you can go ahead and click the finish onboarding button in the bottom right. So the first thing that we have is the ability to integrate with collaborative environments. I will actually sign in using my Google account. We're gonna continue with Google here and I'll select my account on Google. It'll think about it and bam, perfect. We're all set, we'll minimize this. And you'll see that it signed me in and it's even remembered that I linked my GitHub account previously and so it, that gives me the ability to, which you'll learn later on, import gist straight into pieces and so many more features. You'll also know that it, it gave me my cloud subdomain, which I've selected before, but it just reminded me that I still have this active. And of course you can change this to whatever you'd like. And so that was pieces desktop onboarding. Let's go ahead and click finish onboarding. And now you'll actually see us going through a few processes that we do. We essentially aggregate all the data that we, that we just learned from your onboarding experience. And we're gonna personalize your pieces experience to your needs. Say so welcome to pieces, which is great. And now you'll see that right at the get go, we already have two snippets saved, which are actually based on those preferences that we've set. So you can get a little bit of taste of all the features that Pieces has to offer. And that's a wrap for the installation and onboarding part of this getting started with Pieces desktop app series. There's so much more to explore with Pieces, so make sure to check out part two, where we'll dive into more specific details and features that the Pieces desktop app has to offer. Thanks for watching, and remember, the more you use Pieces, the more personalized and powerful it becomes. I'll see you in the next video.